All right, with this last video, or maybe even last uh, two videos, we'll see, for assignment six, this is about what happens when you finish meeting all the requirements. So I've met all the requirements. I've put in the spot illustration. I have a background. I have colored type that I modified and designed. Uh, the line art for the spot illustration is a vector. The black shape text is a vector. All of it's been colorized. I've played with a border and background textures. I've played with a lot of vintage printing techniques. But if it's just not super exciting to you, what can you do? Well, because it's digital, you can make as many versions as you like and try out lots of different things. And to me, compositing is so, so helpful as a skill set digitally because you can always layer and try that. So here is that finished file with all those layers separated out. And I actually quite like now, if I turn off all the backgrounds, I'll just leave a white background. I'm actually fairly happy with this image as is, though that drop shadow is really strong. So let me lessen that. See how much do I want? Maybe so maybe like that. So I like this, this finish, and I like the background, but together they're not my favorite thing. They all seem kind of too similar. So I'm going to show you how to do color separation for real into halftone dots instead of just using it as a filter here over your existing digital color. But I'm going to show it to you on the background, and it's really going to kind of subvert and change the background. And if I'm going to do that, I can also do other variations, right? So first of all, I can turn off the background here and just save my design text and my spot illustration as its own thing. So this could be used as a sticker design. This could be used as a t-shirt design. This can be used as an enamel pin, you know, something on its own. So what do I need to do? I'm going to save it separately in assignment six. This is optional. But I'm going to save this as a spot. And, and once you've saved it as a free-floating spot and text illustration, remember this is at 16 by 20 by 350 pixels per inch. This is a large resolution size for something to go on a t-shirt or something to go on a sticker, right? And so once you have that saved as a Photoshop file, I just want to make sure. So there it is. So I, I saved it as a spot and text free floating illustration, spot illustration. Now I'm going to, going to save it as a PNG and I'm going to show you why. So I turn off all the background layers and I'm going to save as an online format PNG. Now if you go in the Canvas course to links, you'll see a link for a site called Redbubble. And because I'm recording this on a public YouTube, I'm not going to go into the links because it has our, our stuff for other things. But I'm just going to go to Redbubble directly. Redbubble is free to make an account on. I like Redbubble because you have the option, unlike a lot of these print sites, you have the option to make the work totally private so that it's not for public view, but you can still order products if you want, because that's, that's how all of these on-demand printing sites make most of their money, is from artists ordering their own products. So it is free to join, you just need a, an email. So I'm gonna log into my account here. 
And I'm on a few of these. I'm on Fine Art America. I'm on Design by Humans. I'm on Society6. And I'm on Redbubble. <laughs> but I think Redbubble's the one I actually kind of like all their procedures the best. Do you make a lot of money with this? No, I probably make between $10 and $30 a month through Redbubble. But this does all of the printing and all of the shipping and all of the product making on my behalf. You know, all I do is su supply the art. <laughs> and if I don't like how much I'm getting paid for something, I can always increase the price of it. Do, do, do. But this is for what are called open editions. So whatever you put onto Redbubble, there is the limitless possibility for reproductions, right? And then you can also, I don't know why it's taking so long to log in, but you can also specify what kind of products you would want to sell. Oh, my whole computer's frozen. So what do you need for Redbubble? You need a good quality PNG. My poor computer. These large, large Photoshop files. Yep. So why I like putting it at red bubble at this point is I can actually try different background colors behind it, and I can see it on different like t-shirts, on different backgrounds. I can see it on canvas. I can see it on wood. And all it takes is for me to be able to log into red bubble <laughs> and upload the image. Yep. So that is the flexibility I'm trying to teach you with digital art, right? It's not just about getting one product from it. It's about understanding your resources and your layers so that you can make lots of different things with the same digital artwork file. So if I'm kind of stuck about what would be a good background for this, I can put it up to to my Redbubble account, I'll add a new work here. And I don't need to make it public in order to see all of the different products, right? So I'm going to take that high resolution PNG I just saved of just the text and the free floating spot illustration. Remember, if I uploaded a JPEG, it would have a big white rectangle around it. And that doesn't make for the, the most professional looking t-shirt. I'll just call this a college spot illustration. So I can put in tags so it's easily searchable. I can describe it. But this is what I wanted to show you. So these are all the kind of products that your high resolution PNG can be used for, even face masks. And I have sold quite a few face masks over the pandemic. <laughs> and you can choose which one you want to enable, which ones you don't want to enable. And you can also choose background colors. So for instance, the most basic is a t-shirt, right? So if I do a standard t-shirt and then I edit it, these are limited background options, right? Because there's only a certain number of these American apparel t-shirts that they use. So I can see how flexible my design is. And I can increase its size. You can increase it up to the maximum of your resolution, right? But it goes within the print area of the shirt. And you can see the half tones will look pretty weird just from the moray pattern of the screen. But they'll give you a preview once you're done. So if I wanted to place it there, for instance, then I could see it on different background colors. I like the Heather shirts usually, besides the so solid colors. It looks pretty good on the darker colors. It looks okay on the lighter colors. You want to design it in such a way that it can work on a white t-shirt or a black t-shirt. And so often that has to do with building offsets around it, right? <clears throat> And so I definitely have those with like the colorful edges around the lettering. So that looks, that looks okay.
yeah, I think I'd go for that. So once I like that, I can apply those changes, right? Let me just turn off everything else <laughs> so I'm not publishing products I haven't transformed. My favorite product, though, is probably the, the stickers and the magnets, which are perfect for spot illustrations. I've done pillows. I've done laptop cases. They're really nice. Sleeves. And you can do this with your own work. And if you're at all worried about whether you have the rights to it, I have no concerns at all that I have the rights to this image. But if you're compositing from other people's pixels, if you're doing fan art, someone else's intellectual property, then just make it private. And you can still play with these, these options. But you are no, no longer protected under educational free use if you are putting it up for public consumption. So this is on their raw canvas bag. So it's kind of interesting to see it just on a really basic background like that. I actually think that looks okay. It even has the subtle drop shadow behind it. Oh, and then this is the other thing I really like about Redbubble. So let's say I'm getting a, a gift for our college president. <laughs> and this, not a sleeveless top. She wouldn't want that. She would want the the fancy chiffon top. So I'll enable that, but she probably wouldn't want like a big graphic over it. So what you can do is you can actually tile it as a pattern and you can make it an, a half drop pattern, kind of like the half tone dots, right? And it can be as sophisticated as you want. And in fashion design, kind of the smaller the pattern, the more sophisticated. <laughs> yet it's done with a portrait of the college. And then you can choose the background color. And this is the same kind of color selector that you would have in Photoshop, right? And these sync to what are called hex codes. I know in social media and digital marketing, you learn about hex codes. It's the way to kind of ensure the same color profile across digital platforms. So I'm going to choose something that's not too saturated, but a nice dark blue. That looks sophisticated. All right. And now I think those are the only two things I've enabled. Oh, and a canvas bag. Do, 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 do. So now let me just post this so I can show it to you. And this is where you can say whether it's for in, for the public or only for you. So I'm going to make this private and know there is not any mature content. And this is very important. I have read the rights. I have the right to sell products containing the artwork, including any featured company's name or logo, any featured person's name or face, and any featured words or images created by someone else. In truth, before I made this public, I would check with our campus PR because it is a company name, though I'm not using their logo. All right. I don't know if a college is really a company in the same way. It's not a for-profit company, but it is an entity that I do not have ownership of. So always good to check. And then it will show me what those products look like, right? Across their full range. So even when you just design one t-shirt, all of these options become available. And then here is the chiffon top. And there is the canvas bag. If we want to see the product page, we can do that. And it's just really nice to kind of see the flexibility of your art that way. So Redbubble is an option for you. Great for Mother's Day gifts. For all kinds of things. And they do fine art prints as well. Just make sure you have a high enough resolution. So that process has taught me that I like a dark blue background behind my existing image. And so what can I do with my current background? Well, that's what I'll show you in the next video. Now that I'm informed with that information.